Bye bye. Lumify? It's kind of amazing. Wow. Lumify eye drops dramatically reduce redness. In one minute. And look at the difference. My eyes look brighter and whiter for up to eight hours. Lumify really works. See for yourself. Lumify. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Ensure with 27 vitamins and minerals, nutrients for immune health, and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. Tomorrow on ET, our Lisa Vanderpump exclusive, her hot take on the future of Vanderpump rules. We'll see. We'll know when the time's right. We leave you now with 13 going on 30, actually turning 20. Good night, everybody. Do the thriller dance. Come on, come on, come on. Thriller was fun. ET behind the scenes with Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo back in 2003. And for this thriller throwback at Mark's Walk of Fame. It's happening now. A local middle school teacher is learning a lesson about the law, especially those regarding relationships with children. I'll tell you how his school district is reacting. And it's the first night of Niosa. If you're planning on heading down to La Villita, we're going to tell you how to navigate all the construction going on downtown. Humidity is moving back into place. Not only do we feel it, but you're also going to see it and it's going to affect morning commutes the rest of this week. We'll get into those details along with our next storm chances in just a bit. News at five starts right now. Off the chops of breaking news that happened just a couple of hours ago. First at five, one man dead, another fighting for his life after an argument escalates. John Paul Barajas is at the corner of Clamp Avenue and Grosvenor Boulevard. That's where he spoke with San Antonio police who right now are having a hard time figuring out who's the suspect and who's the victim. John Paul, what have you learned so far? Steve, Ursula, well, we just got an update from police right before the newscast, so we have some new details. We now know that a 58-year-old man is at the hospital in critical condition and going into surgery because he was shot. A 27-year-old died here on scene after being stabbed. As you mentioned, police still don't know if they're looking for two victims or two suspects or one of each in this case, but they did say the two men were working at this house where the work truck up the road there is parked. Uh, doing some maintenance for it. And then they got into an argument because a toddler got into the way. They say that neither of the two men are the toddler's parent, but that they do believe one of them is at least the woman who lives there's boyfriend. As their argument escalated and got physical, police aren't sure if the 58-year-old was shot because a gun was pulled with intention to be shot or if during their fight the gun went off and hit him. But after he was shot, that 58-year-old pulled out a knife and stabbed the 27-year-old. That 27-year-old then tried to run from the house but only made it here to about the end of the block where these two officers are standing where he collapsed and later died. They do say the woman in this case that was here on scene is cooperating with police, but obviously a lot of investigation still to be done. The people who are here out in front huddled up and hugging, uh, showing lots of emotions. We've spoken to them briefly. They are related to one of the men involved, but they haven't wanted to speak to us just yet, understandably, with the situation that's going on. But we'll stay on top of this story and bring you the latest as it becomes available. Steve, Ursula. Emotional scene out there. Thank you, John Paul. We'll do it five. A teacher and a coach at Roosevelt High School. This man arrested today for an improper relationship with a student and now SAPD looking for other possible victims. 27 year old Andrew McCown was walked in front of our cameras this afternoon. According to investigators, he started a relationship with a 17 year old student earlier this year. Northeast ISD apparently caught wind of it. We're told he was placed on administrative leave as the district investigated. Police say in March, the district informed them of the improper relationship. During SAPD's investigation, they spoke with the victim, but say McCown refused to cooperate. They say they are now investigating to determine if there are any more victims here and at another school where McCown taught. It appears like this teacher was a teacher at uh, Robinson High School in Robinson, Texas. So we're going to try to reach out to that school district and see if there may be any other victims that attended that school. Northeast ISD did release a statement this afternoon regarding McCown's arrest. It reads, quote, Andrew McCown was hired at Roosevelt High School in the fall of this school year. In March, several students reported that he was having a relationship with a 17 year old student. NEISD began an investigation and placed McCown on leave. He has not been back on campus since March 8th, end quote. 
and McCown's arrest, not the only case of its kind coming to light today. A local middle school teacher has gone from a classroom to a jail cell. He's been arrested also on charges related to having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Katrina Weber now with how this case came to light and what the school district is now doing in response. A face that greeted students every day now is among the files at the Bear County Jail. 55-year-old Ernest Orlando Herrera is the man in the mugshot, someone who had been at the head of the class at Lasoya Middle School. The eighth grade teacher was arrested yesterday on a charge of conducting an inappropriate relationship with a student. An arrest affidavit says the victim is a 13-year-old girl and that the interactions with Herrera involved some sexual contact. The document doesn't mention how long this allegedly had been going on, but it says school administrators notified Southside ISD police once they found out. In the affidavit, police say that they first got the call about this last Friday afternoon. They say Herrera wrote and signed a statement confessing to the inappropriate actions. It also says by the time police were alerted, Herrera had already been removed from the classroom. In a statement released today, Southside ISD has made it clear Herrera has been fired. A spokeswoman did not answer our questions about how long he had been working at La Soya or whether there might be other potential victims. The statement says Southside ISD is deeply troubled about the allegations and that it has zero tolerance for any actions or behaviors that could harm students. Herrera, at last check, was being kept away from everyone. He remains in jail. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, tensions running high overnight on West Military Drive, leading a driver with a gun shooting up another vehicle. This happening while the two trucks were moving down the highway, one of those bullets hitting a man in the neck. SAPD investigators say it happened around 1 in the morning. Officers got there at the scene and found the victim who was taken to the hospital. Police tell us the shooting victim was a passenger in a pickup truck with two other people inside, and the shooting began when they encountered the other truck. We're told it's unclear, though, what led to the shots being fired and that the shooter got away. Police are still investigating. Happening right now, early voting underway in Bear County for several municipal elections that will determine the outcomes of multiple bond issues and races. Ballots being cast for some school board seats as well. Propositions, even some council seats for cities like Gray Forest, Universal City and Medina Valley, just to name a few. Voters have more than three dozen election sites to choose from, and you can vote at any polling site. For a look at those locations, voting hours, and what to take with you to vote, just look for this story on KSAT.com. Early voting for the municipal election goes now until April 30th. Election day is May 4th. And yes, voting is a serious business, partying with a purpose. Some other business going on in San Antonio right now. Yeah, and tonight is a Fiesta favorite, Night in Old San Antonio or Niosa. This year, the event is marking its 76th year. Just like other Fiesta events downtown, though, you're going to have to do a little maneuvering around construction just to get to La Villita. Lee Waldman downtown with what you're going to need to know to actually get to Niosa this year. You're looking very festively. Oh, I'm feeling festive, and we're ready to get this party Party started. 5.30 is when Niosa kicks off, but there's a lot of construction here on uh, South Alamo, but you're watching the official Fiesta station, so we've got you covered. Come take a look at us. You can see lots of construction here, but that did not stir these beautiful people all in line, ready to go to Fiesta and Niosa tonight. Northbound lanes of South Alamo closed last month, but there are some additional closures to be aware of. South Alamo between Cesar Chavez and Market will be closed from 4 p.m. until 1 a.m. Drivers can take St. Mary's to reach Cesar Chavez or Market. But don't worry, all of this construction is not going to be impacting the footprint of Fiesta. All these beautiful people, they found where to go, right? Are y'all excited for Fiesta? Yeah! And they're excited that Quesa is here, the official Fiesta station. There's also signs marking off where to go down there. So if you're walking over this way, just follow the sights, sounds, and smells of Fiesta. Don't worry, we've got you covered. Also head to Quesa.com. We've got a full map for you right there. Don't worry, you won't get lost. Come hang out with us. We're here all night. See you then. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, Quesa 12 News. She's not excited at all. Lee is ready. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Fiesta goes all the way through Sunday, so that means you still have time to 
collect and trade the most valuable thing this week, Fiesta Metal. Yeah, and if you need a particular Fiesta Metal, we may have it for you. Justin Horn, Sarah Spivey, join us from Pika Pika Plaza <laughs> for our latest metal giveaway. Hi, guys. What's going on, hey, guys? Hey, guys, this is a party atmosphere at Pika Pika. Not only do we have a lot of people here to get their KSAT <laughs> medals, we've also got Mike the mascot here. Mike is wearing his flower crown. He looks amazing. We're Go debuting that Mike. flower crown today. He is in the Fiesta spirit. So not only are we going to be giving away our Fiesta weather medals, yep. uh, weather authority medals, we've also got a ton of other metal vendors here selling their medals. Love this one with Wimby. We've got Pika Pika Plaza, this little dog on there with the big red. So really, it's a fun time. It is. Of course, I've got to wish Justin a happy <laughs> yeah. fiesta. And then we've also got food, Justin. Yeah, they roll in a cart of food. Can you believe this? Look at this. Chicken I on a stick. I have yet to have my chicken on a stick, so. Go for it. You know jalapeno what? first. You want me to do the <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. We even got we got funnel cake here too. So they they're hooking us up here at Pika Pika, and the line, well, it's it started. What some people said they got here at like noon, and uh, they're lined up ready to get a KSAT weather medal. And it's been fun meeting everyone. We're gonna be giving away those medals here soon. Yeah, not jalapeno, no biggie, no big whatsoever. Deal. <laughs> Back to you guys. I kind of look like a biggie. I guess you know. What, so giveaway starts at six. For the actual medals, so I guess that was kind of a sneak a peek -a from peek a peek. -a -peek -a. Sneak a peek. -a. Yeah, case at your Fiesta station, scan our Fiesta guide QR code. It's on your screen. That's how you can get all the dates, times, and locations for all our Fiesta events happening this week. The guide also has Fiesta extras, and you can post your Fiesta pictures here as well. I gotta hand it to Sarah because reaching up on six foot four Justin to get him with a cascarone isn't easy. That's true. <laughs> Especially for Sarah, she's so much shorter. Well done, Spivey. She's got some good fiesta experience under her belt. These clouds, they're really hard to shake today. And I think this is gonna be a common trend and a theme for the remainder of the work week and even into parts of the weekend. 59 this morning, that's near average, then 74. The high temperature this afternoon remaining fairly cool because of the stubborn clouds sticking around. Del Rio making it to 83 along with Eagle Pass, 74 Floresville, Myco, Bernie, 71 degrees out there right now. So the humidity has risen a bit, but temperatures haven't really responded to where they typically are at Fiesta time in San Antonio. That will change a little bit in the days ahead. Mostly cloudy this evening, southeasterly wind at 10 to 15. That's going to increase the humidity even more. We'll talk about that mugginess and what it means for your morning commute in just a bit. Your evening commute, if it involves 281, may have a problem if you're headed uh, away from downtown. This is uh, near the Pearl exit on 281 near St. Mary Street. It looks as though there's been a fender bender, two vehicles involved. Emergency crews on the scene, they've blocked off the left-hand lanes, two of them. So it's going to be slow going, leaving downtown. It's straight ahead, spring storms can sometimes put a beating on our houses. Whether it's hail, flooding, even fires, your home insurance can help put things back together. But making a claim not always so easy. We're going to walk you through how to file a claim and get the most out of your insurance after the break. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom, and here's a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. San Antonio's Migrant Resource Center has been funded by federal dollars since it began running in the summer of 2022, but there's a concern that that federal funding could dry up. So what then? How the city is looking at possible backup plans. Plus, the Nyosa Rain Rock. Do you know what that is? KSAT explains this fiesta favorite all today at 6. You probably already know that you're paying more than ever for homeowners insurance, but do you know how it even works? What if a big storm hits or a fire or a break in? Yeah, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains how to file a claim. Hopefully this kind of damage will never happen to you, but if it does, contact your insurer as soon as it's safe. Consumer Report says document everything, take plenty of photos and videos, and make a list of what's damaged and needs repair. When the insurance adjuster visits, be there to see what they see. 
Keep detailed notes of everything you discuss and keep every receipt. A standard homeowner's policy reimburses for living expenses if you have to stay away from your home for a period of time. After talking to your insurer, do the stopgap work. That is, the repairs you need to do to make sure there isn't further damage. For example, having the plumber come to turn off the water. A standard homeowner's insurance policy covers damage to the structure and personal property up to certain limits and minus your deductible. Replacement cost coverage pays to rebuild the house and replace items at today's prices. Actual cash value coverage pays to rebuild and replace items, but factors in depreciation. If it's minor damage, like a few thousand dollars, you might not want to file that claim because your insurer could come back and charge you more in premiums later. And if you file several claims within a short period of time, your insurer could dump you. But there can be exceptions. Some stormwater damage may not seem like a big deal at first, but later turns into an expensive mess. Finally, for a large claim, Consumer Report says you might want to hire a public adjuster to work on your behalf. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a look outside with live cam. We've had clouds sticking around all day long. Adam, the good news is that it's not real hot. Yeah, I mean, that's a trade-off. Whenever we have these low clouds sticking around, you know, it doesn't get as hot outside. Kind of like on. Hold on. Sometimes we've got a gremlin in the system. The batteries fell out. Oh, great. <laughs> the batteries, the batteries fell out. I'm coming, I'm coming over here. Let's get back on camera. Okay, okay here we go. Okay, there we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. Now you should be able to hear me out of both microphones. microphones. Okay, well, the battery fell out. So here, Ursula, help me out with our uh, All right, let's here. do it. All right, higher uh, humidity. You can you. tell from my hair. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means... Um, Damp morning. Uh, damp morning. It's going to be drizzly in the morning. Yep. Um, and there may be some stray storms possible. That's right. A few stray storms. We're not looking at a lot in terms of stray storms. Just a few isolated afternoon showers and storms possible. Did that do the... Yeah, you you're on. Right. Yeah. You got to reset the system. Got to reboot it every so often, you know? Okay, take it from Okay, here. thank you. Thank you for your help. <clears throat> Now, speaking of the damp mornings, take a look at our future cast for tomorrow. And notice how we'll have some fog around because of the higher humidity. The fog is going to be uh, taking over and we'll have some areas of drizzle as well. So some damp morning commutes. Notice I say that plural because we'll have several damp mornings with the fog and the drizzle, but then by 11 a.m. it burns off and we'll have some breaks in the clouds. I do think it'll be a little difficult to fully shake free from the clouds, kind of like what we had out there today, but a, a few breaks in the clouds every afternoon. That typical pattern, low clouds in the morning, some drizzle and fog, and then we get a little bit of afternoon sun. Dew points right now back into the low 60s for most of us, but these numbers are on the rise and especially through the night tonight, our dew points will be rising and that's going to help lead to not just the muggy feel in the air. It's going to feel very humid uh, the rest of this week, but also it's going to lead to that morning dampness. Notice our dew point forecast here going forward. We remain very muggy and it's that time of year where we start to get fewer and fewer breaks from the from the humidity. We had a break from the humidity past couple of days. That's not going to be the case the rest of the week and really over the next seven to 10 days. We don't see a break in the humidity and this time of year that does lead to some areas of morning drizzle. So drizzle pretty much a slam dunk drizzle and fog. So it's going to affect your morning commute, give you to reduce visibility, even some damp spots on the roads. Actual rain and storm chances is what we have here. 10% tomorrow, 20% Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're at 30%. So like I said, just a stray storms possible. And the, it's very conditional too. We'll have some instability overhead, a decent amount of instability, but also a cap kind of sealing the atmosphere and uh, we need enough energy to break through it. So let, where do we get that energy? Well, for one, this swirl west of California, that's going to be trough number one that heads our way. Most of the energy with this is in the central plain states. It's off to the north of us, but we could still get in on some of this southwesterly flow aloft. We talk about that. That gives us those bursts of upper energy. And then another system drops in near us 
to hopefully, fingers crossed, give us a few pop up showers or storms. But overall, we're not looking at anything very organized or widespread. 90 right now in Midland. We're in the 70s locally, like we talked about earlier. Tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. at 66 degrees. By noon, we're 73. Then a high temperature of 83. And again, very gray and damp in the morning. By the afternoon, some cracks and breaks in those clouds. 86 divine tomorrow. Canyon Lake, 83. Bernie, 81. And Bandera, up to 86. We talked about those slight storm chances. Battle flowers Friday morning. We're going to have that morning dampness, just in the form of fog and drizzle. But real showers, unlikely at that time. Flambeau, we just got to keep Keep an eye out for some of the afternoon and evening pop up storms. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right, Mary, when it was announced this morning, I knew it was a big deal, but I didn't realize how big this rivalry is. Oh, yeah, it's one of the most intense rivalries. Classico Regio is headed to the Alamo City this fall, and you know what? That means you'll have an opportunity to see that intense rivalry with your own eyes. And with the NFL draft right around the corner, the Dallas Cowboys answering some pressing questions from the media. Plus, the Texans have new jerseys coming up right after the break. I urge you all to go attend because it may set records in terms of how loud this building will be. One of the most intense rivalries out of Monterey, Mexico, is coming to San Antonio in big board sports. It's a battle for bragging rights and city honor. The Classico Regio will be played in San Antonio's Alamo Dome this October. The announcement was made this morning at the Alamo Dome with Mayor Ron Nirenberg and representatives of both of the Mexican professional football clubs. The two rivals, the Tigres and Rayados, will square off on October 12th and tickets will go on sale next week. So get ready for a great match. Our Nick Mantis will have more on the announcement Act 6. Today, the Dallas Cowboys had their, held their annual pre-draft news conference. Mike McCarthy, Jerry Jones, and Stephen Jones were hammered with questions after a mass exodus of talent during free agency. Plus, the front office has yet to sign their big three, Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and Micah Parsons, to long-term extensions. So as you can imagine, much of the conversation wasn't about the upcoming draft, but rather when Dallas will get deals done while minding the league's salary cap. Those things take time. Uh, obviously, th there's timing based on what other teams are doing with their players at that position. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts, and certainly you want to get it right. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, there's some contracts that you look up uh, and you didn't get right. When you're paying the type of money, you know, we ultimately will uh, or ha would have to to keep them uh, to a DAC, to a mic, or a CD. You, you want to make sure you get it right. The draft begins this Thursday at 7. The Cowboys have seven picks. For the first time in the history of the Texans franchise, a new set of uniforms launched since the team's debut in 2002. The collection features four fan-inspired jerseys, home, away, alternate, and color rush, each a vibrant testament to the spirit and heritage of H-Town. Candy red, bullhorn sleeves, new alternate logo. The jerseys look fresh. All right, we'll be right back after the break. Mainly morning fog and drizzle, morning dampness, every commute the rest of this week and even into the first part of the weekend. Actual rain and storm chances only at 20 to 30 percent Thursday on through the upcoming weekend. But notice the warmer mornings. Humidity returns. Mornings are warmer. Back in the low 70s in just a few days we'll have that. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News Up next. We'll see you right back here at 6.